crazy, busy culture, it is so easy to get confused on what is important and what is not. Imagine that you went into a store one day and all the price tags were switched around. Someone came in during the middle of the night and pulled the tags off of the expensive items and put them on the cheap ones and vice versa. And they put all the cheap tags, you know, on the expensive items. So items that cost $100 were sold for a dollar and items that weren't worth uh, more than a dollar were being sold for $100. What would happen? What would that scene look like? Well, apparently that actually happened to sev several years ago at a prominent store. A group of college students wanted to pull a prank, so they somehow found a way to switch around the price tags overnight. <laughs> and they really fooled people. People actually believed the false price tags. 
You had items which were worth practically nothing being sold for a lot of money, and people thought they were getting something very valuable, and in the end, it, it was just junk. But they didn't realize it because the price tag. And on the other side, you had items which were pretty valuable, but they were being ignored because their price tags said their value was low. People were walking right by them, but they never realized how much they were really worth because the price tags were switched. You know what? That sounds absolutely ridiculous. But just think about it. It seems that we may have switched the price tags when it comes to the meaning of Christmas. Look at this line. I know, it's ridiculous. Oh, where did my husband go? Matt? Matt? I think he went with Jake. I told him he could go ahead and go look at the tools as long as he came back in time for me to use his credit card. Ooh, nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, does tomorrow still work for you and the kids, or? <sighs> no, because Kayla has an after-school Christmas program. What? I know. Well, we can't not make gingerbread houses this year. I mean, not making gingerbread houses would be like missing, missing Christmas. Christmas. Exactly. Well, you know what? Let's go ahead and fix this right now. Okay. Uh, all right. Okay, Google. Pull my December calendar. Uh, Siri, my calendar, please. Okay. Um, how about next Wednesday? Ooh, no can do. Cookie exchange. My mother's in charge, and she will kill me if I miss it. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> we don't want that happening. No, not at okay. all. Um, well, we can carpool to uh, Lights on the Lake from there. Well, I'm supposed to go to the Living Nativity at my church that night. You can't miss Lights on the Lake. I mean, that would be like missing, missing Christmas. Christmas. You got you're it. right. Okay, uh, so, uh, but Lights on the Lake has a nat nativity scene this year. Uh, doesn't that count? Um, you know what? Sure. Why not? Okay, let's see. There. Let me fix this real quick. All right, Lights on the lake. Um, are you going to go to Lucy's party or the band concert on Friday? Uh, both. Um, the concert is at 6 and will be done by 7.30 at the latest. Okay. So the party doesn't start until uh, about 8. And if there's traffic, we'll be there in no time. Ah, you know what? You're awesome. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, let me fix that here too. Um, what about, okay, hang on a second. What about gingerbread houses next? Thursday? Oh, no. Family Christmas pictures next Sunday. And we're still okay. on for mother, daughter, daughter, brunch with Santa. Are we gonna do that? Or? Church in the morning. Oh, are you kidding me? Doesn't God know. understand how busy you are? It's December. Uh, exactly. Missing Santa's brunch would be like missing, missing Christmas. Christmas. I know, I know, you're right. Okay, I can't miss brunch with Santa. Right. We cannot miss brunch with Santa. So, um, uh, uh, that Sunday afternoon then? Going to the Dickens Festival. Ooh, those actors are the best I've seen yet. You tell me that every year. Well, but I do mean it this year. They're the best. <laughs> I'm sure they are. <laughs> so, oh, next Tuesday, right? Um, we're gonna go to my church's Christmas pageant. It's gonna be really good this year. You really should come. It's called Away from a Manger. Mm, nope, look, no room in my schedule or yours. We have our husband's work party. What? How did I miss that? Uh, Ugh. That leaves the 24th. You want to make gingerbread houses on Christmas Eve? Yes, that'll be perf. Oh, I'll move up a little bit oh, here. I'm sorry. Oh. Last minute get together before the big day. I'll put it in now. <coughs> Siri, put in um, last. We have a candlelight service that night. Oh my gosh, church again. Sorry. Can't you celebrate like Christmas this year and like Jesus' birthday next month or something? Um, that doesn't make any sense at all. Mm. The whole reason for December is to reflect on Jesus' birth. Reflect? What? Who even has time in our busy schedules, like, without putting in the whole birth of Messiah thing? Oh, my goodness. But that's why I celebrate Christmas, is to celebrate Jesus' birth and our Savior. But your schedule will be less complicated without, with, 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 without Jesus all in there. My schedule is complicated because I'm celebrating Jesus' birth. I'm not celebrating Jesus' birth, and our schedules are equally as complicated. I mean, the only difference is I get to enjoy Christmas and you have to go to church. <laughs> but I like going to church on Christmas Eve. Listen, all I'm saying is don't drive yourself crazy trying to fit in all that religious stuff. I mean, after all, uh, you get to spend the holidays with your friend and family, and that's what, that's what Christmas really is about, isn't it? Okay. Oop, I think we're next. Okay. Awesome. <sighs> Let's see here. Think about it. Christmas Eve and, and without making gingerbread houses would be like 
Missing, missing Christmas. Christmas. Exactly. So, uh, oh, you got a good man. Um, Back with the credit cards, just in time. Just in time. Ooh. Ooh. Good luck cramming all that in. Oh no, now Jeez. what? What else possibly could we fit in with our busy schedule? Christmas. I think our schedule is missing Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> you already know what time it is. It's Jingle Bell time. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna put up a Christmas tree and hang some Christmas lights, but one thing we're gonna do for show is represent the king. I need y'all to put your hands try to bust a move. Uh, never mind. I, I'll spare you. <laughs> I believe God wants to have fun. I, I think he likes us to have fun, to be merry, joyful. Then people want to be around us, don't they? <clears throat> Matter of fact, when we realize life is not about us or our comforts, but about pointing to Jesus, our life really takes on meaning. And then we have real joy. But unfortunately, there are those who just don't get it. And they believe that it's all about them. Good evening to all, and a very Merry Christmas to you. Tonight, we're going to be deciding who the most important person is at Christmas. I'm going to need your help, though. We have a group of contestants up here that are going to come up here and every time they come up, I need you all to applaud and show them your applause to see who is the most important person. Are you ready to do this? All right, let's get this thing going. Here is our first contestant. We here we have that daily deliverer in his dapper IBS suit. IBS? Doesn't that stand for irritable bowel syndrome? No. International box service. Oh, okay. I was a little worried. <laughs> All right. Just the sight of him walking up to your front doorstep sends Christmas chills down your spine as you anticipate um, what might be in those boxes he's balancing in those awesome arms of his. <laughs> so let's hear it for the IBS man. Just call me Ibs. Well, you can just call me Ibs for short. <laughs> okay. Well, hello, Ibs. Can you Hi. tell us why, why you feel like you're the most important person at Christmas? Why, of course. Without me, you would never get these presents in time to put under your tree. I zip up and down the streets. I move smoothly up those sidewalks. <laughs> oh, man. Without me, matter of fact, 
I deliver these boxes in pristine condition. Matter of fact, I think that's yours. Oh, well, thank uh, you. Yeah, I mean, without me, Christmas would never happen. So, yeah, that's why I'm the most important person for, at Christmas. Well, let's hear it again for the IBS man. All right, now let's see our next contestant. I wonder who it could be. Oh, yes, it's our Salvation Army ringer. Here we have our Salvation Army ringer with a tin tenabulation of the bell she rings 24 7 through the holiday season. Yes, we are all moved to tears every time you approach a department store before Christmas and hear those carols being sung in such gusto and the feeling of the breeze as the bucket sways by our turning faces. Let's hear it for our Salvation Army ringer. Hello, Salvation Army ringer. <laughs> okay. All right. That's great. Would you please stop? Oh, sorry. <sighs> oh, sorry. I didn't hear you. I've lost some of my hearing. There always seems to be a ring into my ears. Well, now there's going to be in mine, too. Thanks. All right. Well, while we're up here, why don't you come and tell us why you feel like you're the most important person at Christmas? While we I clear our eardrums. <laughs> I would love to. I am your constant reminder to give freely during the Christmas season. Will you hear my beautiful ringing and singing? Your heart races, your pace quickens, and you readily dispose of all those pennies and nickels weighing you down. And that is why I am the most important person at Christmas. Well, let's give another applause to Salvation Army Ringer. <laughs> all right, I can't wait to see who our next contestant is. Who is it gonna be? Oh, it's the, nut, the ballerina from the Christmas Nutcracker Suite. Oh, give her a round of applause. Oh, how can we make it through the Christmas season without the <clears throat> beautiful prancing of the ballerina and the Nutcracker tiptoeing daintily along the snow-laden pass? She reminds us of the Christmas ballerina. Oh, wait a minute. She reminds us, ooh, of sugar plums that dance in our heads. We are left with the images of tiaras and tutus leaping and lounging to the sounds of ch 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 Tchaikovsky. Uh, what he said. <laughs> so let's hear for the Christmas ballerina. That's beautiful, dear. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, can you talk? Oh, yes. Oh, okay, just We're usually sure. not asked to speak, sorry. <laughs> I can tell why. Anyway, <laughs> so why do you feel like you're the most important person at Christmas time? Well, that's easy. I mean, what would Christmas be without the Nutcracker? I mean, to see me frolicking and dancing and twirling on the stage, I mean, that is what Christmas is. And for your viewing pleasure today, I'm going to show you some of my favorite moves. We cannot wait. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So first, I'm going to show you the snowflake. <laughs> then, I'm going to show you the flower. I'm going to grow and sprout. <laughs> then. Next is the sugar plum, <laughs> sugar, sugar plum, plum flary. <laughs> That's why we don't talk. Oh. So, you will never be able to get those images out of your mind when you think of Christmas. I bet you we won't. <laughs> so, that's why I am the most important person at Christmas. Well, let's give another round of applause to our Christmas ballerina. Great job, great job, dear. All right, and now for our next contestant. I think I can hear her coming. Oh, yes. Welcome to the next contestant. It's your mom. Oh, yes. 
that dear, loving, sweet servant of the Christmas season who is always in the kitchen whipping up your favorite Christmas sugar cookie and fruit cake and hot chocolate. Ah, uh, yes. She is dressed in her bride apron, and she is flocked with flour from head to toe, juggling those spoons and measuring cups, just as if Santa choreographed them himself. All right, let's give it again for your mother. Hey, Mom. Do I know you? You don't look like one of my kids. Well, I'm just calling you Mom just to represent all of our wonderful mothers. Are you a Christmas scam or something? Uh, no, I am actually tonight's host, and we were kind of just wondering why you feel like you're the most important person at Christmas. Oh, you're talking to the right person now. <laughs> I'm in the kitchen all December long, and I'm busier than the Amazon website. <laughs> why? I don't even stop cooking until Christmas morning, and those reindeer footprints, they're still fresh when I take the last pan of Christmas fudge out of the oven. I make the stuffing, I make the turkey, I make the mashed potatoes, I make the pies, I make the eggnog. Ooh, that eggnog sure sounds good. Hey, buddy, you keep your hands off. That last glass is all mine. All right. You can have the fruit cake. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yes, I am the most important person at Christmas. Well, let's give it again for your mother. All right, well, I think that's all of our contestants for tonight. So I think it's time to find out who the most important person at Christmas is. Oh my goodness, this is so exciting! All right, let's see here. Uh, <laughs> uh, what are you doing? I'm really sorry. I'm, we, I'm we, really sorry. We are trying to figure out who the most important person is in our Christmas program. What and I know, I know, but that's why I stopped you. Are you sure you've considered everyone? Uh, I mean, look at our contestants. Wow, Don't they all I represent see. every part of the Christmas season up here? These well, are surely the most important people of the season. Well, I think you missed one, the most important one. Um, who could that be? <laughs> well, it was a baby born over 2,000 years ago in a little town called Bethlehem. He is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and without him, there definitely would be no Christmas. Well, I didn't think of that one. I'm going to have to consult our audience tonight, okay? Hang on a second. All right, audience, if you know that Jesus is the most important person of the Christmas season, I need you to give your loudest applause, please. Well, <laughs> I think we have it. I think we have, and I think I understand now. Jesus is the most important person at Christmas. All right, you know what? Kids, come on up here and help us worship him.
As you may have noticed, we had a little help. Uh, some of the kids were very brave to get up there and, and hadn't, hadn't learned that with us, but they were very brave to get up there and worship anyway, so <clears throat> we appreciate them helping us as well. I just love to watch the kids worship. Pretty amazing when little people, and you watch some of them that knew that song and they were singing along. I just love that. The thought of God sending his son to be here on this earth to walk beside us and help us on our journey, that literally blows my mind. As we said earlier, some people think it's all about them and they don't even recognize anything else but them. They don't even recognize that God sent his son for you, for you personally. You know, he sees your joy. He sees your sorrow. He sees your heart and he cares. I wish I could help. I'm just not that equipped. You know, the first time I heard that phrase, I was seven years old. My grandma told me whenever my mom went to jail, I didn't have anywhere to go. My father wasn't in my life anymore. The social worker even asked my grandma if she would help. The look on grandma's face filled with sorrow and defeat. She said that she was sorry that she didn't have enough energy to raise a young kid. But then there was my uncle. He said that he didn't have enough room or money to take care of another kid. I didn't have anywhere to go. Nobody, I was, they was looking for somebody uh, young and uh, that uh, I didn't have enough room for them. They just weren't well equipped. We wanted to help, but we just weren't equipped. At least that's what my husband Adam and I told ourselves when we first learned about Mike. I remember when I first saw him, I was volunteering at an after-school party in a club, and I spotted this little boy with such sad eyes. Not even the surprise pizza party that day interested him. I knew then something was wrong. So I asked another volunteer about him, and she told me that Mike was a foster child. She said she didn't know his entire situation, but uh, he had a foster care worker who would come and check up on him. He would pick him up and check up on him every once in a while to see how he was doing. I remember I just had this deep feeling of conviction. I couldn't shake. I, sh I should be doing something. So I went home and told my husband, Adam, about Mike. Guys, we have four kids. And with only Adam's income, we were already pinching pennies to get by as it was. Our house is so crowded. It's so small. And honestly, we really didn't even have that much time to spare. We really wanted to help. We just weren't equipped. Anyone who looked at my story at first glance would probably just say I wasn't equipped. How could I possibly be the mother of the Messiah? Really? People probably thought that the angel Gabriel took a wrong turn when he shared that breaking news with a girl like me. I was young, unmarried, and poor. Why would I be the right fit? I don't know anything about children, and certainly nothing about royalty. Aren't I the least equipped person for the job? But then the angel said something that changed everything. He said, for with God, nothing will be impossible. I realized that that meant he could take a young, unprepared girl and equip her for a gigantic task. That is, if she was willing to accept the challenge. So I said, yes, yes, I will serve the living God. And yes, I will follow his plan. And yes, he will provide. So Jesus became my son, mine and Joseph's son, to raise for the Lord. Trust me when I say it was a challenge. 
Jesus was born in a manger. He didn't have a throne or crown here on earth with us. We even lost him at the temple when he was 12. We certainly weren't perfect, but it was God's perfect plan. Joseph and I just had to remember that God would equip us. God would equip us. At least that's what Adam and I kept reading in scripture as we prayed about wanting to help Mike. <laughs> we talked about it for weeks. We cried about it. We, we just couldn't shake the feeling that maybe somebody, there was better someone else you know, out there for him. But we had this burden in our heart. And we knew we were led to verse after verse about God's provisioning. Yeah, there might be someone else better out there for him. Someone with more room, more time, more everything. We really wanted to help, but we were not equipped, right? And then it happened. At Christmas Eve service, Mike walked into the church. We had never even seen his foster family attend before. And then later, we found out that they just pulled into the parking lot on impulse because they saw the sign outside for the service. They sat right in front of us. Mike, with his sad eyes riveted on the pastor's words as he talked about how Jesus was, there was no room for him at the inn, and how Jesus was born in a manger to a young virgin Mary who was chosen by God to be the mother to his one and only son. How Joseph adopted Jesus as his own son the day that he was born. How God provides, how God equips. How an unlikely couple was prepared by God to be a part of his master plan. Adam squeezed my hand at the end of that service. We were going to adopt Mike, and God was going to make it happen. God is going to make it happen. I was going to get adopted. I knew it that day when I heard that preacher on Christmas Eve talking about Jesus' birth and how God can do anything. It was like um, I had felt that whenever he was... And later that day on that pew, I prayed for God to give me a family like Jesus did. And just like um, Joseph and Mary, one that he could equip with. And then... It happened. it happened. God paved the way for the adoption process. He took care of the financial checks, the visits. He equipped us for the hard times to come. And he provided for us every need and continues to do so now. We are not perfect, but it was God's perfect plan. Part of a forever family. Now Mike is part of our family because Nothing, Nothing is, is impossible, impossible with God. With God. Yeah. Oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born 
adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord. For he alone is worthy. For he alone is worthy. For he alone is worthy. Christ the Lord will give you all the glory. Will give you all the glory. Oh, will give you all the glory. Christ the Lord. Today, December 23rd, 2018, can be that day that you tear out walls and tear down walls and come to the manger to adore Jesus. Let's take note of the price tags, our priorities, and make sure they are placed correctly in our lives. Basically, what I'm saying is that today is a great day to find answers to our search, to recognize all our busyness for what it is. Then to recognize our importance or our lack of <laughs> really is not what Christmas is about. Today is a good time to renew our faith in the, in the one who knows us, the one who loves us, and the one who is for us. So I'm going to get right to the point. You know, some people... They say that I'm too old to believe in you. I mean, they may be right. But, I mean, it's Christmas Eve, and I thought, you know, what more perfect time to renew my belief. God, I'm just not, I'm not feeling Christmas. I mean, can you... Can you send me a little bit of extra Christmas spirit? I mean, I'm, my heart's just not in it. You know, I've, I've listened to all the Christmas radio stations. I've even helped put up a tree. I'm just not feeling it. You know, it's, it's, it's been a complicated year. You know, we just come out of another election season. And there's people spewing hatred and anger. I mean, they're saying things that probably deserves their mouths to get washed out or at least smacked. I mean, there's, there's rioting, there's terrorism, there's, there's anger, there's hatred. I mean, there's fear. People say things to each other. They argue about politics, about jobs. They argue about standing for the national anthem. I mean, sometimes they even argue about what happened on the walking dead. I mean, God, I, I, know, I know it's not necessarily Christmas cheer, but, I mean, why are people so, so angry at each other? I mean, God, they, they just, it just seems so hateful. 
can you help with that? And God, that's, that's just what's going on out there. I mean, in here, God. In here. God, I'm scared. I'm worried. God, I don't know what to do. I mean, can you help with that? I mean, it just seems like everything is getting worse and worse. I mean, I, I understand that you're not just somebody that grants wishes. I mean, you're not, you know, like, like when I was younger, I would sit on his lap and I would, I would just ask him for things. I know you're not like that. I mean, Jesus, you're more than that. You're way more than that. God, you're so much more than my brain can even fathom. God, you're infinitely more. I mean, you were born, you lived your life, you worked, you taught, you lived a perfect life. I mean, you did everything right. And then you gave up that life to show us a way, to show me a way, to show me the best way. I mean, God, I think, I think the world is going to be dirtier now than what even your manger was when you came. So God, what I, what I want for Christmas is that you would give me the eyes to see what you see and ears to hear what you hear and a mouth that speaks from you. God, I wish, I pray that you would give me hands that would get dirty to help people that need it. God, and you would give me feet to go where you send me. But most of all, God, I pray that you would give me a heart like yours. So God, this Christmas, I believe in you. God, I believe in miracles. <clears throat> Please bow your heads. Four weeks ago, we started a search. The search began with a search for life. And we talked about the blood of Jesus, the only source of life. Jesus gave his life upon the cross so that we could have life. Then the next week, we talked about the search we all have for peace, peace of mind, peace of heart, and that can only come from one source, and that's the Prince of Peace. And then last week we talked about the search for joy and what that meant, and it goes much deeper than, than the earthly happiness. And Jesus came, was born, and died and rose from the dead to bring joy to the world. Joy to you and me. Joy to us, regardless of our circumstances. Now we just heard... We just came full circle. We heard a voice telling us and expressing that search for life. And I want to ask you, do you have that life that can only come through Jesus? That Jesus Christ is life. He doesn't come just to bring life. Jesus is life. He didn't come just to bring peace. He, is. he didn't come just to bring joy. He is joy. He's the source of it all. I'd like you to join me in this prayer. Lord Jesus, I come to you now. 
And we're all on a search. Search for life, peace and joy. And we know, God, you're the only source. Jesus, I thank you for not only being born to this world, but living among us for 33 years, suffering and dying for me, being buried and then raising from the dead for us, for me, for life. And I commit myself to you right now. And I thank you for never leaving me or forsaking me. Thank you, God, for not giving up on me. Thank you that you are the end of the search. I need not search anymore because you are life, you are truth, and you are love. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hope 
Don't 